Welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 199. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing, man? I am fantastic! I have been sent a whole bunch of custom brushes from Anger Studio, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, all these lines, all these textures, I love it! <laughs> this is gonna be fun to join the wipers with. Alrighty then, alrighty then. And also joining us is Kyle. Ah, oh, it's nice to be here, Norman. It is great to be back. <laughs> Welcome back. So how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. I tell you what, I actually feel like a writer for the first time in months. I've been live streaming some writing for the novel I've been doing since Nano Remo, and I actually completed a chapter and I wrote a lot of words and I actually felt like for the first time in ages that I could actually write again. Most of it was rubbish, but that's kind of never here nor there. <laughs> oh, true. Nano Remo just requires you to write. To be fair, NaNoWriMo got the first 50,000 words out of me. I mean, that's the hardest part. But then I decided to take a break through December because of Christmas and birthday and New Year and all that sort of stuff and probably forgot how to use the keyboard, write, read, most of the skills I need in order to actually get, you know, through my life. Except the keys ASWD. That's true. I remember those keys because I've been playing Black Mesa on Steam. Wow, that's cool. (laughs) So also joining us is Puffy. Sorry, I won't hijack the show today. Sorry. No problem. We've got bigger <laughs> plans later. Is this something I don't know about? I'm going to hijack. You're hijack. That doesn't make sense. I don't know why. But anyway, how are you doing? Uh, I'm very ill. I have um, a slight temperature. Um, not a fever. It's fine. It's fine. Getting better. Can't draw. Oh, I hate my life. I hope you get well soon. And I think I contracted what you got. Like, I'm having a sore throat, I might be getting a fever, and yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Suffer. <laughs> wow. Grim dark, very much. And our guest for this week is Luna Jack. Hello. I'm here. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I am coming to you from Utah, United States of America. So... It's a little early here. Not really, but early by my standards. Yeah, sorry about that, man. Like time, okay. zone, time zones and whatnot <laughs> is very troubling for this show. Yeah, why can't we live on a flat earth? But if we do live on a flat earth, wouldn't the time zone still be there because of how the sun's rotation would be? I don't no, know. No, <laughs> it would be like Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> <stopped it there. laughs> No, no idea. I, I'm speechless. I, I never played Minecraft, so I got no idea. That's okay. You're not missing much. But how have you been doing? I've been doing pretty good. You know, just gearing up for some fun things that I'm sure we'll talk about. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But before we start the show, officially, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who's your favorite character? Well, if you were to take a wild guess, um, my favorite character is Luna. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't see that coming. I know, right? Yes. So, why Luna? Well, Princess of the Night is best princess, of course. Here's the reason why I like Luna, is my music, I like heartfelt things, and I guess I can relate best to Luna, however sad that may sound. <laughs> no problem. Because they haven't developed her character as much, and so it's left a lot of room for developing her uh, her as a character individually. So I think she's really easy to make into whatever we need her to be. True that, true that. By the way, have you been reading on the My Little Pony comics, the official one, where it features Luna? Uh, are you talking about the micro comic? Because yes. The micro comics are fun. Like that one issue, that made her really, really relatable. <laughs> I loved it. That was my favorite. One of the best out there, really. Mm hmm. What is your favorite episode then? See, now you told me you were going to ask me this one, but I'm still not prepared for it. And I think we can combine it into what got me into My Little Pony. Oh, okay. Can we, can we combine the two questions? Sure, sure. Okay. So, I was really, really sick in early 2016 with something. Or not 16, wow. 2013 with something. And, uh, I had gone through all of the horse shows on Netflix 
I watched Flicka. I watched Secretariat. And uh, I had run out, and so I started watching Horseland, and it made me gag. <laughs> <laughs> By any chance, did you watch BoJack Horseman? Oh, yes. I watched through all of BoJack. <laughs> all right. Except BoJack Horseman came out after 2013. All right. So I've watched it since since then. But I stumbled onto My Little Pony, and I thought, I am such a pathetic person for having stooped so low. But I had nothing else to do because I was bedridden. And so I watched through it and thought, oh, this isn't so bad. And then I got to the winter wrap-up episode. And I, that is the one that really hooked me. The musicality, everything was there, and depth of character. It surprised me, and that kept me hooked. And I would, about a month later, I discovered other people were making music besides the show music. And uh, that's kind of what got me into making music in the fandom. So before this, have you been playing any music before? Oh, yeah. No, I was singing before I could talk. Ah. I wrote my first song in elementary school, really. But I didn't really start writing music until um, high school. When I my aunt challenged me to write a 100 songs with her from November to April. Oh, wow. And so not write a hundred songs with her, but each of us would write a hundred songs and just kind of push each other on toward that arbitrary goal of a hundred songs. And we did it and I, you know, cultivated that love of writing music as well as, you know, made it through some of my worst songs I've ever written, which lets you get to some of the better stuff. Yeah. Usually you have to go through the bad ones to get to the good ones. It's- That's right. That's your favorite episode, and that's how you became a fan. So the most obvious one is, what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? Well, I think my parents still think I'm gay, and um, I can't really talk about it around them without them getting upset. So uh, I keep it to myself for the most part with my family, but my friends don't care, and the people I work with don't care. They find it a little quirky. I haven't necessarily converted any of my friends. But I don't think that's a goal of mine. But I've found a lot of friends within the fandom, and of course, it's kind of a norm for us. So with this fandom by itself, it's strange. The topic that we talk about is a show for little girls initially, but the fans and the reaction and everything about it doesn't seem like a show for little girls. It definitely is a show that is. Made to push a product. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True that. I mean, every show is out there to push a product. Uh, some more than others. I mean, that's Hasbro's main goal, but they've done a good job of not making it only to push a product. And the fandom being a strange fandom, oh yeah. Um, I mean, I thought it was a little weird. When I first got into the fandom, and I still have found it a little weird online, but you go to a convention, and it takes a lot of getting used to. You're your normal one at the convention there. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I love everybody there, but it is definitely not normal by the world's standards. (laughs) Understandable, understandable. So, talking about conventions, um, I see on your YouTube page, which is at youtube.com slash user slash music, and I see that you've been to BronyCon? Yeah, I went to BronyCon this last year. I was a guest at BronyCan and Everfree Northwest and Crystal Mountain PonyCon this last year, and those were my first pony conventions that I had ever been to. BronyCon went there with uh, some good friends. Honestly, I think that would be the only one, or Everfree Northwest, both of those, would be the only ones that I would go to if I weren't a guest. But it was really good to meet and connect with friends that I had known online for so long, but never met in real life. I went to my first Bruni convention where that was what, in last year? Or I think 2014. Yeah, 2014 for Buck and wow the traveling was just stressful on me but getting to meet everyone that was fun 
that's what it's all about is meeting everyone, connecting. I, I had no idea what I, what to expect when I went to Everfree Northwest back in May of last year. First PonyCon ever. And I wasn't going with anybody. Uh, I had made arrangements to share a room with Blue Nose Reindeer, Fritzy Beat, and Blind Coyote, and the other one who makes awesome music but is so quiet that I often forget his name. <laughs> The quiet one. I'm sure I'll remember it. He's very quiet. He's awesome. But never met these people in real life and really hadn't interacted with these people. Well, I get to the convention and people know my name and it's, and they're recognizing my badge and there are people asking me to sign things and people telling me that they love my music, other people who I've just interacted with online. And it was so surreal. I mean, it was nothing like anything I've ever experienced before. I mean, there's the song, Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Right? Yeah. Well, I didn't know I was getting that. And uh it was really, really cool to go there and ha- be recognized by people who I'd never met. I mean, some who just knew me, but there are some people who came up to me. And, you know, there was this one guy, I remember, who came up to me with, tears in his eyes, who had bought a piece of artwork for me to sign, oh, wow. saying that one of the songs I had written had saved his life, and it made him decide to keep on living. And I will never, ever forget that, and I would have never had that experience had I not gone to a pony convention, and I've never had anything close to that ever. So it's definitely something I'm going to keep on doing. And uh something that's really touched me. Well, I mean, hearing that, I'm just, I'm just speechless. Like, your music affected people in such a powerful way that it changed their lives. Yeah. And that's, that's always been the goal of mine in writing music. I always want to convey a message in a way that people can feel what I'm feeling. I feel like that's the power of music is to be able to convey pure, raw emotions. And that's a powerful way to change lives. And I always wanted to do that, but I never expected it to affect people as strongly as it has affected some people. I just have to say that's amazing. And personally for me, I enjoy a few of your songs. Like I do remember uh, saving the tracks for the choice I have made, and also Alone. Those are pretty awesome songs. Oh, thank you for saying so. Those are both some of my favorite songs that I've ever written. Alone was written after BronyCon, and I had just left some good friends, and we all know about post-con blues. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember it. But I think I didn't got hit that hard because of the whole, I need to travel for. 12 hours in a plane, jumping from airport to airport while lugging around a heavy 17-inch gaming laptop. Yeah, not fun. <laughs> oh, fog. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I I think that the post-con blues got replaced with post-con stress of traveling. <laughs> <laughs> post-con exhaustion. Yes, that's, that's me. <laughs> oh, wow, 12 hours. Yeah, just from the UK to Asia. So, yeah, that's not fun. I've made a few... Well, no, they were more than 12-hour trips, but I know, I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah, but still, but still, I mean, um, besides, well, um, forget about my story, it's more about you. So, I was wondering, you said you started writing when you were in high school, right? Right. So, what were you writing back then? Was, was it like one of those um, typical teenage love songs or hardcore metal? What was it? Oh, no. So... I've always been kind of married to my guitars. So it's all been, my music, my genres have really been shaped by that. I do a lot of folksy type stuff. Very acoustic, very vocal driven. And I don't know if anyone here is familiar with John Denver and James Taylor. My style is very similar to them. Don McLean. Did the song American Pie, like, buy a pie, Miss American Pie, drove my Chevy to that one. Mm-hmm. Y'all know that, that one. I remember that. Oh, I always thought that was Weird Al Yankovic. 
No, he did no. the my, my, this year Anakin guy, me. Oh, yeah, 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 that's the right, that's the right, right, right. Yeah. Parod- parodied it. But um, American Pie was from the 70s. So it's a lot like that. A lot of my inspiration as far as far as musical inspiration is uh, comes from the band Switchfoot and John Foreman. They're kind of in limbo between min- mainstream rock and alternative rock. What I love about their music is it's very lyrically driven, and the lyrics are never about drugs and sex and rock and roll. You know, it's about things that matter, and that matters to me because I feel like the lyrics are... Positivity in life. That's the important part. Right. Positivity in life. They're, they're the part that conveys the the little parts of the emotion. So you got the music, which can convey the wide emotion, but then you get those intricacies that the lyrics introduce that really shape how how that emotion affects you. So you asked what I was writing back then. I should tell you, I don't only write pony songs right now. Like I post mostly only pony songs to my YouTube channel, but I put other songs on my SoundCloud and I write songs about everything. So, ponies are just a good inspiration where I've developed a fan base. Um, back then I would write about the snow outside my window, or I would write about, you know, there's a song on New Year's Day 2010 that I wrote for my horse Jax, who that night got caught in some barbed wire, oh. and it he freaked out and sawed it right into his bone, right above his front left hoof. Oh, man, that's not pretty. Yeah, well, it wasn't, and there was a good chance that he was going to be lame the rest of his life, and he was six, and he was my horse, so I, I wrote a song about that. But he did recover. He's perfectly sound now, so. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. I was back riding him three months later, so he healed up pretty good. I derive inf- inspiration from everything. I'm looking at your YouTube page and I see a track called Stars. And most of the titles of your song, if you don't look at the picture images or whatever it is, it's just like normal songs that you hear on any channel, except you put the picture of ponies. Like, for example, I said, uh, the choice I have made and also alone and the one I'm seeing stars. Like, those are just typical titles for any normal song or non-pony related songs. Yeah, I only post songs on my channel that have that are inspired by the show. But when I write songs, I want to make sure for the most part that it would be listenable by anyone and not just fans of the show. For fans of the show, my songs have deeper meanings because well, they they can pull deeper meanings out of it. Like the choice I've made. Let's take that one for example. Mm-hmm. That song is clearly about, you know, shining armor and cadence and uh, them falling in love. But not only did I pull it from that, but I wrote that song for a girl that I was engaged to oh. at the same time. And so I pulled some inspiration from there, but, you know, nowhere to say, I place my hoof over my heart mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to be kind of well-rounded. And the more I listen to that song, I I didn't feel like, hey, if this was not pony-related, this is still a good song. I mean, I do enjoy the lovey-dovey bits. And yeah, this is a really good song, pony or non-pony. Now, the song Stars, however, that one is really a pony song. It starts out, in the clouds up high fly the pegasi. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to not relate to ponies, it's possible, but yeah, pegasus now are related to ponies, mm-hmm. so it's virtually impossible. Right. And and it uses things like every pony and, and other pony words. That one was written, I wanted that one to be more overtly pony. Ah, uh, all right, all right. So sometimes I do, but generally as a rule, I write songs in a way that... that show that is clearly inspired by the show and relatable to the show, things that other people outside of the fandom can relate to as well. So make it general for the general audience then. Right. And I think that that makes them stronger too because 
you know, if I make it relatable to everyone, there's a greater chance that you're going to be able to relate to it and feel something from it as opposed to something so specific. Mm. I, I get the general idea. And like if you play one of your songs in the car and you have a friend sitting next to you and they sing to it, they won't go, ew, pony songs. I don't like this. Eee. I've been listening to your music and I've been looking at your YouTube and uh, all the rest of it. And there's some, and I've noticed that when you, the first sort of uh, few tracks you were posting, you, you did under your, your normal name. And then you slowly sort of transitioned into uh, referring to yourself as Luna Jax. Mm-hmm. Were you, um, were you trying to um, separate the music that you were doing for the Pony fandom from yourself? Or was it, or was it just because you developed an OC at that round about that time? That's a good question. Originally, didn't know what to call myself and I felt silly coming up for coming up with a name for myself. And I'm not saying that people should feel silly coming up with a name for themselves. I just felt that way. After about six or seven months of being in the fandom, I realized that I wanted a different name for myself that kind of represented the things that inspired me within the fandom. So it was originally really, really cheesy. And kind of like the first name that everyone comes up with in the fandom. And it was Rainbow Luna Dash. And I cringed thinking about it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But after that, I still combined things. I picked my favorite pony, which was Luna. But then I picked my favorite real pony, which was Jax, my horse. And combined those. And uh, it stuck. And it was unique enough that it was recognizable and there was only one other person on the internet using it so oh really <laughs> yeah a <laughs> webcam girl oh. <laughs> oh okay wow so and she's not really active anymore and so it makes it a lot easier to find me in Yay. fact the first two pages maybe the first page and a half last time i checked are just uh results for me when i search google or bing so good SEO right there. Well, definitely. I do like the idea though that there must be that there might just be a slight opportunity that one fan might have sent a message to the cam girl going, "I really loved that track propaganda you did. Can you tell us how you did it? Perhaps you could do a live stream." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder if that happens. She uh, did take she did take the Twitter handle that I wanted, so I had to throw an underscore in there. Oh. Thing <laughs> You asked if I developed an OC. I sort of developed an OC per se, but I have to show you where it comes from. Uh, and it'll take me just a minute to find it. So, All right. You well, you're doing it. that. I'm going to cover the news. And, well, funny enough, in today's news, My Little Pony Facebook page just hit one mil, one million followers or one million likes on their page. And in commemoration... With that, they decided to release a poster which you can buy. I don't know where, but I know they sell it. Featuring all of the ponies, or all of the characters that were featured in the episode for over five years now. And that poster is pretty awesome. You have a lot of characters, like most the recent one and some of the old ones. Like Trixie, Luna, uh, that old guy from the old folks home, Brayburn, Tarek. And a lot more. Personally, for me, I like this poster. Really looks good. I want to say that I'm very, very sorry for whoever needed to draw every single one of them. Yeah. But honestly speaking, I don't think they drew um, a new one for this. Like, I think they just took the assets and just copy-paste. Yeah, but still think about it. Just placing them Mm. must be a pain. True that, true Uh. that. Oh, also, I have to point out something. Uh, if you never seen um, Sapphire Shores Cutie Mark, in this picture, it shows it. It's a really small picture, but hey, it shows her cutie mark, which is, I think, a stage? It looks like a stage or something like that. I don't know. It's really small. I'm trying to find her, but I swear it's like playing Where's Wally. She's I'm right around. next to freaking uh, Fancy Pants, I think it was his name, and there's King Sombra and the Griffin Sh- Master Chef dude. Yeah, they're there. But still, this is a, I would say it's an interesting poster because of all the characters, but it's pink. They could have done better. 
That does look like a little bit like a stage, or maybe like her name, her ply, Sapphire Shores. Maybe that's a sh- that that's the beach, and there's some sapphires instead of the ocean. Who knows? But I'm still surprised. After five years, they just hit one million followers. Wow! You would have thought that they hit that number a long time ago. Did you say one million or five million? One million. Okay. Well. I don't know. I don't feel like Facebook is a really good platform for a fan base. No, it's not. It's really hard to get your name out there. I got a f- Facebook page from a gallery, and I got, a, I don't know, maybe 32 total views in the past, what, six months or something, while Twitter, Tumblr, and any other platform I'm on has got, like, almost, like, 500. Mm-hmm. Facebook's not very good for advertising. It's just specifically just just for you, just for, like... To put yourself out there, like, put a rant that no one will ever read and you won't feel sorry for posting it. <laughs> that sort of deal. Amen. And for posting depends, pictures like the one that I just shared. Technically, Facebook is um, just how you use it and for what you use it. Because if you use it correctly, you can get out there. Ish. Because uh... mostly Facebook is used by people who concerned, who are concerned about the world, not fandoms. Well, you can use the Facebook for. Sorry, this is me you know, going all corporatey, but it's like I mean, my last job was to um, was to do with social media advertising for one of the companies I worked with, and I had to do that sort of thing on Facebook. And the thing is, is that you can actually, it's like all social media. It's how you use it and how you position it in terms of what you want to do. For artists, Facebook perhaps Unless, isn't quite as right. I feel like for artsy things, it's like art and music. Definitely not the platform for bands, especially with the way that, well, I mean, we could go down this road all night, uh, especially with the way that uh, they have changed the cost of advertising and the way that it, pages interact with their fans. They've uh, attached a price tag to it now, so it's expensive for bands and artists to really reach their fans now, even though they're already liking the page. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say that, yes. Exactly. But honestly speaking, for artists, don't they usually use uh, MySpace for that? No. 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 <laughs> what MySpace is, is so bad. Sorry, because I, I just... Use MySpace these days? Bad, say, because... For, for MySpace what? was bought by Justin Timberlake a few years back when it was about to die. Oh. And he just bought it to keep it alive as a piece of memory. Oh. Uh, now it's primarily used by musicians, but no one uses MySpace. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, if you're a musician, it's best to go on Twitter, SoundCloud, or even, uh, what's the platform again? I, I forgot. There's a second one. Uh, Bandcamp. Bandcamp, yeah. Twitter, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, YouTube, Instagram, Vine. Yeah. yeah Fom.org. Oh, we'll, we'll get to Fom. We will. <laughs> But I want to talk about these pictures for a second. Oh, right, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the one on the bottom is my OC, and the one on the top is me and my horse, Jax. And uh, it's not photoshopped on the top. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the horse, and that's Jax, right? That's Jax. Yeah, he looks awesome. But, yeah, I, I see that you patronize him. Pat- <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Pat- that is the most patriotic. Patriotic. Yeah, patriotic. <laughs> Patronize is a different thing entirely. Sorry, uh, my bad. But patriotic <laughs> horse ever. It All is. We need it, now is some screaming eagles in the background. <laughs> the White House. No, some so monster trucks. His, and explosions. His hindquarters open up and reveal a minigun. Oh God. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh. I'm just waiting to find out that the horse is actually Canadian. <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> wow, what a twist. <laughs> <laughs> so this was done for um July 4th? Uh yeah, this was well actually this was done for July 24th in Utah. We've got a holiday the 24th of July which is Pioneer Day, oh. which celebrates our uh pioneer heritage, people crossing the Great Plains of the US to escape religious persecution in the West. Or religious persecution in the East, they were escaping to the West. Little Mormon heritage there for you. <laughs> All right, then. So I just need to ask, how many hours did it took you guys to paint jacks? So my brother and I usually do it together, and it takes about two hours to paint him. We use uh, just 
straight vegetable food coloring, we use about a quart of it or about a liter in metric terms for all you non-Americans out there. And we apply it with sponges. My brother usually does the red stripes, and I have made a stencil um, with cardboard and duct tape for me to stencil around the stars with blue on his white bits. Yeah, takes about two hours to apply. takes about ten minutes to wash off with water. If you look closely at the hooves, however, that is with spray paint, and we do golden hooves. Oh, okay. So does he ever complain? He doesn't complain. Or, you know, I would expect that he would not like the idea of being painted. <laughs> so Bro, there's a series. Paint job. <laughs> there's a series of movies in the. I don't know when they were made, but they're old western movies, uh, called Lonesome Dove. Mm-hmm. And there's a horse that kind of looks like him, you know, a uh, yellow and and white paint horse. In that movie, is it's kind of the main horse. Well, that's his grandsire. Uh, he's a movie horse. Oh. So he he loves to perform. He likes going out for people. And so when we get all painted up, he knows that there are going to be crowds and crowds of people cheering for him, and he gets really excited. All right. So I'm. is it me, or is there a scar on his rear hindquarters? Like, I, I'm seeing a scar on his leg. Is that the wound that you're talking about? No. 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 So... No, there's no scar on the back there. On his front left hoof, you can't see it because it's turned away from the camera. Right there above the hoof is where it's cut in. Oh, okay, his... because I'm from the angle of the picture I'm seeing, it could be or it could be shadow, so I didn't know. It's all right. Oh, that's all right. No, it's just, yeah, right there on the back, that's just muscle definition. Ah, uh, all right, all right. So now leading to the other picture, which is your OC. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's just the same thing. You know, we just tacked on some wings. <laughs> no, we only need is a screaming griffin. That would be patriotic enough. You know, Pixel Kitties did a picture for me, a brony can of him, and it's of my OC saluting, and it's got an eagle on his back crying, also <laughs> saluting at fireworks in the background. Oh, Pixel Kitty is just awesome. And she did that, like... Was that a full color or sketch? She just did a sketch for me. Oh, wow. But still, that would be <laughs> awesome it's enough. It's pretty man. epic. I keep it in my guitar case. Wow, still awesome. And the cutie mark, how did that come about? So also on that image, the cutie mark should be white. I, It took me about six months to of switching between colors to determine that white was the correct one. It's a music note. It's a star. So it's... uh. A star isn't necessarily American, but the five-pointed star is usually the is, American. Yes, is usually the American star. Mm-hmm. You know, it just represents music, represents love for my country. Pretty much it. Yeah. Well, I have to say that your OC is really original. Besides uh, James Cork's OC, which is movie slate, she has what um, film satellite like hair. Yours is out there, stripes, <laughs> stars, definitely. Yeah, original. It's pretty gaudy. That's still it. It's yours. It is mine. And rec- it's recognizable, which I think is... The most important part of any OC. Which is important for me. Yeah. I think it's good to have an original OC. And I think it's tough to come up with something original that isn't red and black, alicorn, <laughs> half dragon. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's... It's tough to walk that line of originality and cringeworthy. And I was a little worried about that initially in making this OC, but I think, I think it does a good job of being recognizable without crin- being cringe inducing. Yeah. And in my head, like in my personal head canon, he could be just an entertainer. Like he's just doing <laughs> this just to stand out. I am the entertainer and I come to do my show. Yep. Sorry. There's a song for everything you say that pops into my head, and I only let about 10% of them out. Oh, well, <laughs> we, we need you more on the show so we can have those musical numbers. That's just awesome. <laughs> Unless you guys have something that you want to go on to, Puffy brought something up that I'm very passionate about, especially this month going into next month. Ah. So if you guys are okay with that, I want to do a plug 
for one of my favorite websites on the internet called fom.org, F-A-W-M.org. Do not go to dot .com. <laughs> You'll be sorely disappointed. Um, or maybe you won't, but then anyway. <laughs> FOM.org is short for February Album Writing Month. And during that month, the goal is to write 14 songs in 28 days. 14 songs in 28 days. Yeah, I'm on the website now. And yeah, I'm looking at it. 14 songs. That's usually an album. 13 songs plus one bonus. February Album Writing Month. Mm -hmm. So this will be my seventh year doing FOM. Oh, wow. And there have only been two years when I've actually made it to 14 songs, but that's okay. I get more excited about FOM than I do about Christmas and my birthday combined. And I get pretty excited about Christmas and my birthday. So why? What makes it... Why am I so excited about it? Yeah. So let me break it down for you. Let me just go through a little a FOM with you. All right. So December comes around and I start feeling this little itch inside of me for FOM. And I check the website, and I do a little updating of my profile so it's ready for the new year. January comes around, and the forums start to come alive on FOM. The community kind of wakes up. <laughs> and we start talking about the new gear we've gotten that year, new instruments that we're going to try. We arrange collaborations. We give each other support when we don't know what's going on. Uh, we p participate in forum games like there's Fomerick and Fomku where there's a thread that for Fomku where every post has to be a haiku and then Fomerick every post has to be a limerick so it's like da 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 I mean they're fun games like that people get so excited we share old songs during January to get each other hyped up things that we've written during FOM. And there are some really talented people on there, some talented lyricists, talented musicians, vocalists, guitarists. And I just get excited to hear new things coming from them every year. And I get excited that people get excited to hear new things coming from me every year. And a lot of people, when I tell them about FOM, they think you're insane because 14 songs in 28 days you're probably not doing anything else during the month of February, right? <laughs> but the thing that I think a lot of people that intimidates them that they don't understand is they think you have to do 14 songs in 28 days. 14 songs is just an arbitrary goal. FOM is really whatever you make of it, and there's no pressure to write 14 songs in 28 days. But that's something that I strive for every time. I'm, last year I only wrote two songs. So I get so excited about it and it's like the only thing that I talk about in January and February. And then I get so burnt out by the end of February. It's like catharsis to just sit back and be done and maybe rework a couple of the tracks because I just do simple demos when I, when I record the songs, but to be able to go through and just listen and have that sense of accomplishment of I have new songs now like that I can do whatever I want with. I can polish them up and post them to my YouTube and SoundCloud or I can or I can just keep them for myself for if I want to do something later. The biggest part of it for me is the community and getting back with people that you only see during that time of year, hearing music from people who have so many different styles during the month of February, we try to reach something called FOM Escape Velocity. That is where more music ha is written during the month of February than there is time in February to listen to it. <laughs> wow, that's, that sounds fun. And I'm looking at the website now, and there's no real goal, per se, besides the, okay, 14 songs within 28 days. And the reason why? Because you can't wait for inspiration. So... This is one website where all the musicians gather around, uh, try to motivate one another just to create songs. And from what I understand, from what you described, the songs that you wrote are not done per se. They're just there for you to work on later on when you have more time or better instruments and whatnot. Exactly. Someone brought up propaganda 
Uh, Propaganda was written during FOM. You know, what other songs were written during FOM? Wish That I Were More was written during FOM. There are a lot of songs on my channel that get written during FOM. Open Up Your Mind is one of my favorite collaborations that ever came from FOM. Fire, kind of an industrial electronic track. That was written during FOM. So I, it's it's really a place where I get to explore new creative ideas and work with people that I wouldn't otherwise work with. FOM looks like a good place to start. Is equivalent to Nano Remo for writers, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, I was yeah. going to say that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I, it from, I, was, I had a huge spiel prepared about, oh, it's like this. and oh, Here, give, us, give us your spiel. No, 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 no. I'd listen. If I start now, I'm going to be on. I'll be doing it for half an hour because I'm still recovering from doing Nano Remo in November. Well, you <laughs> you are the writer of the group, so is it anything similar? The concept is the same sort of thing. I mean, Nano Remo. The what you do is you've got November. You've got what's it? Thirty days, thirty one days. I've forgotten how many days are in November. That's how much I, I got burned out. 28. I actually, it's not twenty eight in November. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking February. My bad. Sorry, it's twenty nine. <laughs> Is that, yeah, I mean, it's the same sort of thing, you know, you've got a month to write 50,000 words of a new novel, and, you know, you don't have to be, if you can, it's great, you get a nice little certificate, and, you know, you get to say, I've got 50,000 words done. But, you know, it's not the be-all and end-all, but it's got that community element as well, that you're part of forums, and you're sharing ideas, and you're, you know, you're saying, hey, look, I wrote this much today, and what do you think of this, and, or you end up going, I wrote this much and most of it was rubbish, but it's getting me closer to the end and I can change it in the second draft. And it's just so much fun to do it. But I, I imagine like like doing the February album writing month, by the end, you're just so burned out. You, you, you kind of had to take a bit of a breather. I mean, I finished, when I finished Nana Remo, I was going, yes, I've done 50,000 words. Brilliant. I feel great. Didn't write a thing through December and forgot how to write by January. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. I, I mean, they're so similar in that respect. And I don't know what community elements there are for NaNoWriMo just because I've never done it. I mean, I would do poetry if I were to do it, but I don't know. Are there any websites dedicated to providing a a forum for NaNoWriMo or Remo? Well well, it's got forums built into it. So what happens is you sign up and you've got so your profile. is there a website? Oh, yes, There's there is a website. Doc- okay. So it's oh, exactly here. the same thing. Oh, definitely. Actually, I'll link you just now, actually, and I'll pop that into the... Uh, With the buying. The thing here. Boom. I was wondering, like, for form, has there been any well-known musician who participated in it? There are people who go out and perform and have toured before, but no one that I know of. So form was born in 2004 is what it was, and there were six people who did it. They all live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it just grew from there. The next year, they were under 100. This year, there will probably be between three and 4,000 people doing FOM. Wow. So I don't I don't know that it's as widespread and as well-known as NaNoWriMo, hmm. but after looking at Going through the NaNoWriMo, I'm sorry, I call it NaNoWriMo. Do you care? Nope. <laughs> no, not really. Sit, honestly, it's, it's, it's always, writing month. <laughs> yeah, NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo. I mean, it's, it's okay. a bunch of layers together. It's fine. I'm sorry. I just I hate correcting myself. Oh, okay. and, uh, I'm not representative of the company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look exactly the same thing. See, during November, I do Naso Almo, which is National Solo Album Writing Month. Hmm. Or, yeah, National Solo Album Month. So Now, for the insane farmers, that's what you call someone who does farm, a farmer, there is a challenge called 5090 that starts on July 4th and goes until September 30th. There are 30 days in September, yeah. And the goal during that is that's a period of 90 days, and the goal is to write 50 songs in 90 days. Wow. So there's no judge to judge your songs, is there like you could have one minute jingles or even 50, 30 second jingles if you want to, if you want to do Oh it. yeah. One of my favorite songs to come out of FOM last year was a collection of 10 songs in a single track, but each of the songs was 10 seconds long. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is something interesting. Let's see. FOM 15, Expendable Friend, You Have Such Nice Eye Muscles. That's a song that came out of farm. 
judging from how you act, um, music revolves around your life, right? Music does revolve around my life, and my life revolves around music. Because every time we say something, there's always a song for it. Yeah, I think that's actually a medical condition called musical memory. About 5% of the population suffers from it. I wouldn't call it suffering for me. Maybe suffering for everyone else. But... Is it that bad, really? <laughs> I mean, that would be cool just to go into songs. I, I think Pinky would be proud of you. Oh, there's never a time when there's not a song in my head. There's always a song in my head. Like, I have my own background music to everything I do in life. Don't we all need background music in our life? Like, that would be awesome, seriously. I feel like Kronk from the Emperor's New Groove as he's <laughs> sneaking out of the palace to oh, dispose yeah. of Emperor Cusco. Oh, wow. Doing the sort of Scott singing, like, <laughs> Scott, 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 Scott. <laughs> oh, wow. Still, that, that is just amazing. Puff, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, you've been quiet for a bit, so we were wondering. I was uh, wondering. Do you know why I'm quiet? Why? Because I've actually written a weird song. Yay. What? Really <laughs> now? Yeah, I have um eight four lines. Uh, that is 32 lines Ooh, of wow. whatever this is. <laughs> Wait, you just written it now? Yeah. Wow. I'm jealous. <laughs> cool. I think she should share it. I know, yeah, sure. Yeah, actually, here, go for it. No. We okay, have don't share it. Come on. <laughs> no, we have don't sing, 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 sing. I'm not gonna sing it. <laughs> right, it, right. it needs to be worked on. Shut up. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> we'll right. Wait for it to be worked on. Alright. So. It will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you tease. But, there's something pop into my head while Puffy was writing songs. So how do you work with your songs? Do you write the lyrics first or do you like write the melodies first? My workflow really affects the kind of songs that I write. If I want to be more experimental and try something I haven't tried before, I usually will avoid going to my guitar until the very end because I know if I pick up my guitar, it's going to sound a certain way. If I start with it, because that's how I normally start. So I guess I should go over how I normally start first time. <laughs> so normally what happens is I'll pick up my guitar or I'll go sit down at the piano and I will start singing nonsense uh, with different chord progressions and pick patterns. Just whatever my fingers decide to play whatever song is playing in the back of my head. And when I say there's always a song going in the back of my head, I would say maybe 60% of the time it's a song that exists, and I would say about 40% of the time it's a song that I'm making up on the spot. So I try and channel that out, sing things like, I don't know why I'm sitting here in this little tiny room. I'm at the university using good internet. Because my internet sucks right now. So, I mean, stupid stuff like that. Or it'll be more emotionally driven like, I don't know about this new place. I'm just trying to fit in. Cause I've never been quite so far from home. I don't know. Stuff like that. If I didn't want to focus on the lyrics as much, wanted it to be more musically driven than lyrically driven, I would open up my audio workstation, which is Logic Pro X, mm -hmm. and I would break out maybe my sampler plug-in software instrument and play with some samples and sound design or pull out some loops from my loop libraries and start piecing things together. That makes the song create a feeling of its own initially, and then I just feed off of that fi feeling to write the rest of the song. Hmm, so it's either or based on how you want to write the music and how you feel, right? Exactly. Mm. So I, I forgot to ask, like, your tool of the trades. You just mentioned that you work with FL Studios, was it? No, no, no. no? Logic Pro X. Logic Pro X. Logic, Logic Pro, Pro X. 10. That is a Mac product, right? Mac only, yeah. All oh, right. So professionally, I am a professional videographer. I own a production company. And I film a lot of horse shows. I'm the, I'm a video producer for the Utah Grizzlies hockey team and ECHL team. So I direct their TV games and 
and stuff like that. I produce commercials for Mountain Star Healthcare Network. So I do a lot of video stuff, and so I lean toward Mac because I cut in Final Cut Pro X. Yeah. yeah. And also it's the industry standard, so yeah. Yeah. My work is creative work, and a Mac lends mm-hmm. itself well to that. I don't need to be... I don't need to delve into customizing the code and and things like that. The Mac just works the way it needs to out of the box for what I'm doing. I love Windows. In school, I studied computer science for a long time, too, and learned a lot of programming, and I love Windows for doing that. Mac isn't great for it. <laughs> yeah, Mac is very limited with what you can do with it. Mm-hmm. But... I feel like I have to defend myself a little bit because there are some people who are Apple snobs who give the rest of us a bad name. And I love Apple Mm -hmm. for what it does. And I am also a person who recognizes the merits of Windows computers and Linux and Unix and whatever else you want to use. So coexist, people. I'm just saying. True that, true that. <laughs> I, personally for me, I used to have a Mac. Uh, I used to have a MacBook Pro. But that thing blew up on me. Like, it fried. Like, something happened and I couldn't use it anymore. So, the worst part was I was recording a show and the guest was uh, one of the people for Everfree of West. So, yeah, I had to uh, reschedule and get a new mic, which I'm using right now. And long story short, I had to pay half of the price of uh, the laptop just to get it fixed. And thinking yeah. about it, like, oh, yeah, they say three months warranty. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I always buy the extended care warranty. Always. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I think it's based on location also because of the price and whatnot. And popping in an extra few hundred bucks is worth it, I think. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I I spent. This is the nicest MacBook Pro they offer. I spent thirty one hundred dollars on it, but it's what I do for work. So I mean, it's yeah. a. It's not a frivolous expense for me. Yeah, it's a necessity for work. Like as for me, mm-hmm. this show is kind of a hobby, and I don't have the extra cash to spend on a new laptop. So yeah, and they're expensive. Yeah. So anyway, hmm. now you all know I like Mac computers. But I'm not a Mac snob. Good to know. (laughs) Yay. By any chance you have an iPhone? I have an iPhone, an iPad, an Apple Watch. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Well, certainly not an Apple snob. (laughs) Hey, if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go big. Yep, true that. The the, the ecosystem works. Like, you have everything, it's much easier. If I were a Windows guy, I'd probably have an Android phone, a Chromebook, and, uh, um, what is it called? The, yeah, I'm not sure. the tablet, the, the, the tablet laptop that they've got. Oh, wow. Um, Surface, the Microsoft Surface. Surface. Pro. Probably have that too. I'm thinking about getting one because of how easy it is. And it's Windows so you can plug your USB. To me, I think the Surface Pro would be something that I would get into because of my, well, my work. I like mm-hmm. to record. So I want a USB to plug in my USB mic. So, yeah, that would have to work for me. I, iPad don't have that, so... It Actually. Make... Really? <laughs> yeah, so the the camera adapter for mm-hmm. iPad and iPhone, I actually plug in my Scarlett 18i6 interface, which has six mic preamps, eight inputs, and a whole bunch of outputs via USB into my iPhone and iPad, and I record on those all the time. Oh, wow. My song, Victory's Mine, is completely produced on my iPhone. Wow. <laughs> well, you got me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so people think there are limitations, but there's not a whole lot of documentation on how iOS products work, and they're really powerful if you know what to look for. Mm, true that, true that. Well... Personally, for me, I think spending a few thousand bucks to get a new tablet like a Surface Pro would be more efficient for me rather than buying an iPad where I spend this much to get it and I need to spend another few hundred bucks to get the adapter for it. Yeah. So Well, adapter's only 20 bucks. But... Yeah, true, but location of country <laughs> and exchange rate. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah. 
I'm not saying that it's not a good plan. I'm just saying it's not a good plan for me. Right, right. To each his own. Mm, true. Well, this has been a fun little tech talk. Uh, yes. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> we talk about anything and everything. Like, the show is under hiatus and, well, we have to expand. Talking oh, yeah. about gadgets, do you play video games by any chance? I play very, very casually. Mm. And I'm on Mac. <laughs> uh, so otherwise I would probably be, um, wouldn't be talking to you right now and I'd probably be playing Fallout 4. Oh. Uh, and, uh, Battlefront. Well, but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I mean, I've got a Wii. Oh. Oh, Wii's <laughs> awesome. Like, I love the Wii. But yeah, really not even a Wii U. Wii U. But I, I hacked the Wii. <laughs> so I've got all of my Nintendo 64 games on there. All my NES games, Super NES, all of my GameCube games and Wii games, I've got them downloaded to a hard drive. So I have all of my systems inside of that Wii. What do you mean to that, man? Like, having classic games is just awesome. Mm-hmm. I like classic games. There's less pressure. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, I play Minecraft occasionally. When I say occasionally, I probably pick it up once every three months. <laughs> and then I realized that it was a mistake to pick it up again, and <laughs> I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Do you try and make musical notes in Minecraft? No. No, no I avoid music in Minecraft. <laughs> it makes me sad <laughs> when I try to make music in Minecraft. <laughs> well, I, I never played it, so I <laughs> can't say much. I tried playing it before, but I don't think that's my kind of game, no. You never, you didn't play with Legos as a kid, apparently. I did. I played with Legos, but Minecraft... Oh, see, then that would be your kind of game. I'm just saying. It's just big kid Legos. Yeah, but I I don't know. I mean, I'd rather hold the pieces and do something with them rather than chop down trees, run away from uh, those exploding things, the what you would call those green... Creepers? Yeah, creepers and whatnot. Well, yeah. then you play in creative mode. Well, need to get the game first, but still. I, um, yeah. I don't encourage you to get the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think, Norman, what you need to do is join me in Retro Games Land and get yourself an original Xbox and a couple of nice games on that. Uh, yes, Halo, Blood Gulch, let's go play. Oh, yes, wow. exactly, Halo, we'll go on there. Halo, Blood Gulch, or Halo 2, or what else is there on there? Hang on, actually, no, I've got all the games right here. Let me pick a game and then we'll Halo. Camp and snipe each other. <laughs> Don't mention sniping. I've got a friend who only ever uses the sniper rifle, and I've need and friends of them on the basis that he's far too good with it. In every single Halo game, through one, two, three, and particularly Reach, he's found a way of annoying me beyond all measure with that thing. Oh, so, see, what if... I love, I love modding Halo 1, and so I may, my favorite mod is when I make the sniper rifle shoot plasma grenades. Oh. So you shoot oh. someone with it, and all of a sudden they're just glowing, and they freak <laughs> out and run around, and they explode. <laughs> that is just evil. Wow. So I'm guessing you had an Xbox original, right? No, I just had a friend who had uh -huh. one, and I would go over there all the time. My parents are very prote were very protective of the Media the games that we were allowed exactly, uh -huh. and so I would go over to friends' place and get my <laughs> friends' places and get my media consumption. Uh, well, I, I know the feeling, and yeah, I mean, video games. When they say that video games lead to violence, I don't think so. Bad internet leads to violence. That's true. I don't have an opinion on that. It's not the internet that leads to violence, it's the lag. <laughs> so true. Oh, lag, yeah. No, the moment the, the upload speed goes wrong, you just go, oh, come on, I just, I just want to snipe this guy, and I... No! And before you know it, that's you shut down for the rest of the night. Oh, wow, well, yes. I am so sorry for you guys, because I have perfect internet. la di da <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about it, because I'm uh, going to brag. Oh, well, man. see, I'm at the university right now, and we've got a 10 gigabit line. So, I don't know what that yeah. means, but that sounds cool. 10 gig. That we have means 400. 400 gigabit or megabit? Um, it's megabit. <laughs> yeah, most probably. Yeah. So I have 25 times as much as you do? Yeah. 25 times the bandwidth that you've got right now, Puffy. Bravo. Get wrecked. Bravo. Just, yeah, get nice. wrecked. Get wrecked. <laughs> You've done well. I, mean, I got done done. So no. Wait. So wait, you said that you have, what, uh, 50 GB or 10 GB? 10 GB. 
Oh, wow. Well. 10G little b, not big b. It's gigabit, not gigabyte. My best is just 45 megabytes per second. Like, uh, I'm scrub. Yeah. Any consolation, Norman, my uh, internet line is powered by two jacket potatoes, so oh. <laughs> it's not exactly a great line. <laughs> well, Having said that, they... I haven't said that, they get cooked quite fast. You know, if you actually stream enough videos from YouTube, they do get cooked in about 20 minutes, which is faster than the grill. Hmm. <laughs> There's something to consider. Uh, yeah. So, guys, got any questions for Luna? I, I'm fine. Huffy knows well, you... me, though. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> oh, okay. So... But even I, I got to learn quite a lot from you today. What I usually don't know. <laughs> me. <laughs> when I'm ill, please, All right. please, it's so, a mistake. So, I was on Puffy stream a few days ago, and I saw you popped on. When I saw your avatar picture, I kind of recognized it, but I didn't know where, and I saw the name. Where have I heard that name before? And where have I seen that picture before? It could be because of, um, I think one show was on Cantalot Hill, a, a show with the same Elements of Harmony? Yeah, EOH. I'm a host on Elements of Harmony sometimes, but I do a lot of their video editing. Well, not a lot as much as I have in the past, but yeah, I host sometimes. I've been a guest on there before that. Yeah, and like I said, I've seen your pictures, and when I double-check my YouTube, I'm subscribed to your channel. Like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. awesome. You forgot. Yeah, I know. And it I, happens. Yeah. I always wanted to invite you on for a while, but it's always like, okay, I'll just have to wait. I'll just have to wait. And then like, hmm, perfect opportunity. Puffy stream. I know Puffy. You know Puffy. So why not ask? So how do you know Puffy? From the Hi Hi Puffy Yummy Yumi show. Mm. No, hi, that's hi, not where I know. <laughs> well, through a mutual friend of ours, Lichen, <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, he dropped God, me no. into the Team OK chat. Oh God! No. Uh, or oh, Discord yeah. chat. And uh, then Puffy was in there one day, and we had a chat. And she listened to a song that I wrote last farm about ducks. <laughs> and uh, ever since then, we've been the best of friends. <laughs> Yay, ducks! <laughs> I like this farm thing. Strange thing come out of it. <laughs> Oh yeah, That's I think I wrote. It's for. <laughs> there was an awesome song that came out of Farm in 2012 called "Symbiotic with You." What it reminds oh. me of is "Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya." Uh, symbiotic. So it's she's singing to the bacteria that lives inside of her intestine. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and it's like, Sweet microflora, my colon, you share. I feed you chili to show you I care. And when I flatulate, it lets me know you're there. It sounds like you like the beans. I guess I'll always be symbiotic with you. Yep. Oh, wow. Beautiful amazing. song. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one that was written called, uh, I'm Facebook friends with your cat. <laughs> he doesn't use get on the computer a lot. He doesn't have opposable thumbs. But you raised him from a kitten, and boy, I'm pretty smitten. I can think of another stray you should bring home. There are so many good songs. <laughs> I know someone who does that for their cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that they're a very nice person. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are. Oh, wow. But still, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, like, I've almost run out of questions here. I mean, I'm trying to keep the time, and Jax, you're a really interesting person to talk to. Oh, well, thank you for saying so. <laughs> I try to make it a little interesting. Things get a little crazy the longer you know me, I think. You'll fit in with us then. <laughs> yeah. We know Lycan. That's the thing. We know Lycan. We know like him, or we know Lycan? No, we know like him. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, his name. Oh, God. We also know the chord. Oh, mm -hmm. true. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I think uh, 
we'll invite you on another day because right now I'm out of questions and I don't want to repeat myself. And that's that's okay. I'll tell you a joke though. Oh, okay. So I was uh, looking on the internet for a radio mm-hmm. for my car. I found one for only a dollar. Mm, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the the only problem they said was that the volume was stuck at full, and I thought. I just can't turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> a man after my own heart, they were the puns. I love it. <laughs> this is not the first time I hear it, but I still love it. I know. I I've s- been telling the joke for like two weeks now. <laughs> I just wanted to crack it up partway through because she knew where that punchline was coming from. She just knew. She <laughs> just knew. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> glorious. What can I say? That is one... No, I'm not good with the puns. That, that was funny. That was funny. Norman, you know what What I will do? What? I will hijack the show mm-hmm. and invite him oh. again. <laughs> Perfect plan. Do so, man. Oh, yeah. You can hijack him for this show and I'll hijack him for any other projects as well. We'll have him everywhere. We'll bring him everywhere. I'll only come High if five, you hijack... <laughs> I will only come if you hijacks the show. If I, I will happily hijack. I will the show. hijack show. I, I, I will Puffy. hijack. Right, Puffy, yeah. you mean you hijack it now, Norman? I'm afraid you're no, no, being no, taken over no. this. You have to hijack it. <laughs> the hijack. I, I got it. I got it. I think we all got it. <laughs> Nobody kept. <laughs> oh hell! Uh, we should invite Lycan like on. Up. We should invite Lycan on too. No, we but, should not. <laughs> but it'll only be a hijacks if you give me shrooms first. Uh, sure, I love mushrooms. So hijacks, hijacks. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I'm still recovering. <laughs> not not mushrooms, shrooms. Uh, Psychedelic shrooms. Uh, I feel like there should have been more laughing than that. <laughs> uh, I'm still recovering, but anywho. Do uh, not invite Lycan. Why? It's because he has like, like um, yeah. <laughs> just no, he has like a book of terrible jokes. Funny enough, whenever I invite like an on, he never tells the joke. He's never punny enough. Well, I'm gonna sell one for him uh, right. that he told me from that wonderful book. Mm-hmm. What do you call a group of sardines? Um. A t- <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Then. So, Jax, is there anything that we missed out? Why did Sally fall off the swing? Why? Because she had no arms. <laughs> knock, knock. Oh, who's there? Not Sally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this, uh, this kind of a fun happens on my streams. Check me out on Picasso.tv slash Puffy Smosh. <laughs> I'm actually not joking. That happened on the stream. That's true. That's that's why I was saying it. <laughs> oh, <well>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh well. So anyway, um, I think I we can close the show here. And uh, Jax, thank you for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. This was fun. So let me do a proper closing. Um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can catch us at the NBA show at gmail.com. And also you can catch us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at the NBA show. Where Sweetie Bot will tweet this show and talk to you guys if you have any questions for her. And also you can tweet to me. I am at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently tickle my fancy. We don't want to hear about what tickles your fancy, Norman. I, I don't know. It, it's one of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh god, I'm dying. Uh, I'm getting high jacks. Uh, no, that's just terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm on at Norman Sanzo. And Ro, where can I find you, man? You can find me at Relicious underscore Art on my Twitter, where I tweet about pretty much everything that comes across my mind, and especially a lot of cool people's web comics. Or you can check out our gallery at ReliciousGalleries.tumblr.com, where I reblock other cool people's arts and illustrations for inspiration, motivation, and promotion purposes, of course. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh, Kyle, what about you, man? Well, you can find me at uh, Facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. 
where I post all my updates about the writing that I'm doing and also the shows that I'm a part of, both the MBS here and the Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, which you can watch on the Hyam Bronies YouTube channel. Uh, our latest episode is with Ayo Kusanagi, and we've got another episode coming up. We've got a whole season planned, loads of fun things, so make sure to check that out and enjoy yourselves. Uh, what about you, Puff? Uh, as I mentioned before, piccato.tv slash puffy smosh. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Oh, uh, I seriously promotion. don't have a schedule when I stream. Just follow me and you'll probably find me. I stream. And you'll get like three emails a day saying Puffy Smosh is now streaming on <laughs> Picard. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we got that. We got that. Uh, usually it's two because my OBS fuck screws up and uh, I just need to restart it real quick. Um, and it, Okay, fine, sometimes it's three. Um, but I also, you can find me on DeviantArt. That's basically where I post all of my arts and stuff. Same as always, but face much. Technically, just Google it. You're going to find lovely things. You're going to find me everywhere. Awesome, awesome. I'll be putting those things in the show notes. And Jax, what about you, man? Se quiseres me encontrar, podes me encontrar nos seguintes links. Eu estou no youtube.com. Uh, Luna Jack's music. E podes me encontrar no Twitter, uh, Luna underscore Jacks. Também no Instagram. Uh, podes me encontrar no Facebook, mas eu não vou responder muito. Uh, mas isso é tudo. Muito obrigado. Norman, do subtitles for Portuguese. Please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's like one of those animes, like he, where you watch the Japanese and read the English sub, but with Portuguese. Um, I, uh, I guess. <laughs> I thought it was all, for a second, I thought there was a technical error. I was looking at my headphones to see if it said "made in Portugal" on them. <laughs> uh, I, wow! I think this is the first time where we got a guest who speaks in another language, too. Oh, yay! <laughs> So, anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Do you have a moment to hear about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? <laughs> uh, maybe later. Maybe later after the show. Uh, you can also catch us on funnyofreelife.com. Uh, links are in the show notes. Yes. Uh, but anyway, I have been Norman Sanso. I have been Relicious Rhymes of Delicious. I've been Kyle McCall, a.k.a. The Nice Cry. I'll be back. And this is Luna Jax, and I don't have something clever to say. <laughs> uh, so that's the outro for the show, but that never stopped us. So <laughs> take us out. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. Chelsea, you, Chapazine, you. What he said. Bye.